Tesla will flip the script at 1010. Are you guys ready? I know I'm ready. Let's get ready to rumble with solving the money problem. Spent two years shadowing Elon Musk and then writing a biography. Has some thoughts about Tesla's 1010 autonomy event. This week, OpenAI eclipsing XAI in the fundraising race in artificial intelligence, raising $6.6 billion, surpassing the $6 billion that was just raised by Elon Musk's XAI back in May. Joining us right now to discuss what is turning out to be quite the AI tech race and so much more is Walter Isaacson. He is the author of Elon Musk. He's also a Perla Weinberg advisor, partner, a Tulane professor, and importantly, a CNBC contributor. It's nice to see you. And friend of Andrew. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and I'm hey, very happy to say and back and, uh, friend of Squawks. <laughs> Okay, blah, blah, blah. Let's get down to the information. AI tech race. XAI versus open AI. Let's get it. Um, Walter, what do you make of this, this race? Where you see open AI, which seems to be mm -hmm. clearly, I think, in the lead relative to everybody else, but you may think that everybody's uh, very, very close to each other. And then XAI, which, by the way, at least by my eyes, has actually caught up uh, or gotten very close very, very quickly. Yes. Fair observation from Andrew here. XAI, Musk's AI startup, was late to the party and has made a stunning amount of progress in a ridiculously short period of time. Probably not fair to say that XAI has overtaken OpenAI's LLM yet, but it appears that that is only a matter of time. The stunning And maybe you could say that they had the opportunity, at least XAI, to follow behind OpenAI, but that wouldn't be valid because so did Apple, but Apple decided to disband the AI efforts, at least in their own right, and follow behind open AI. So again, it just goes to show the performance of Elon Musk to be able to assemble and construct companies that actually have the good progression rates and especially can catch up with the competition. Now, they could catch up with the competition. I don't know if the competition can catch up to them when we're talking about Tesla, but let's jump back into it. Shout outs to solving the money problem. Progress from company being founded to nipping at the heels of the industry's best LLMs, an incredible feat. But even more insane is how quickly XAI's Memphis supercluster named Colossus came online. Apparently it took just 19 days, which is a world record. And Musk-led companies have a history of getting shit done significantly fast and more affordably than anyone else. It's gonna be a very interesting next few months and years. XAI has caught up very much, and I saw Musk and Sam Altman together about a week ago. And there's, of course, a little bit of, I mean, a large bit of tension that right. goes back four or five years when they both started OpenAI, and now Sam is taking OpenAI and making it no longer open and no longer not for profit. And also telling people, if you invest in us, we don't want you to invest, invest in, in others. others. What will be interesting is the, flip, uh, the script getting flipped a bit uh, next week, October 10th, when Elon introduces RoboTaxi and things that operate in the real world. When Musk bought Twitter, he got this huge data feed of a right. billion tweets. Now, before he jumps into that real world, guys, that's a big difference. And he's going to explain it here along with solving the money problem. And I want you guys to focus on the difference between artificial intelligence that comes from other people and artificial intelligence that will come from Elon Musk. I'm talking about the real world artificial intelligence. I'm talking about artificial intelligence that you could leverage and utilize. Let me shut up and allow Isaac's son to take over. When he has Tesla, he has a billion frames from cars mm. every day. That's the data. The big thing you need is the data set to train on. And the big next leap is real world AI. Cars that drive themselves, robots that walk. Well, Walt has absolutely nailed it here. The data stream from X, an absolute goldmine for training language and video and image generation models. It's the largest and most up-to-date real-time data feed on Earth. Brilliant for language, brilliant for video, brilliant for images, but not at all useful for training robots, either four-wheeled robots or bipedal or any other form to operate in the real world. For that, you need real-world data. And whereas any AI startup, as long as they have the resources for the training compute. Here we go. Nobody wants to buy that car. Get up out of here. Data and or just scrape the open internet for language, e.g. making a language model. As long as you've got enough resources, not a problem, it's just a matter of time. There's no equivalent data source, the internet. For the real world. So Walter pointing out here, two necessary ingredients for useful real world AI, language, which obviously is useful to be able to interact, right? Ask questions, give commands and so on. That's only one piece of the puzzle. You must also have the real world capabilities. And while it was easy, so to speak, for XAI to catch up to the rest of the industry in language models, I struggle to see a way that any company is going to be able to catch up to Tesla with real world AI capabilities, unless they have the real world data stream that Tesla exclusively currently has. And I don't think people have recognized this yet. There's still a lot of dingbats today who think, and they're wrong by the way, just wanna make sure you know they are absolutely wrong, but companies are miraculously, magically, and almost instantaneously going to solve autonomy in a generalized manner just after Tesla. 
With what data, you idiot? One of the questions becomes how XAI is going to be integrated or not right. into the development efforts of these other products. And so let me tell you one thing about Tesla, Elon Musk is that right, he the, tries to integrate everything. He's not going to set up walls and silos, even though some, you know, Tesla's publicly traded, XAI. Well, that's what, but that's what I was going to ask. So there's going to be an investor class that's in XAI, as right. we know. There's an investor class that's in Tesla. There's another investor class that's in SpaceX. Look, when he took over Twitter, he brought engineers from Tesla and other companies to help build the AI right. there. He blurs those lines. Plus, he even has Neuralink, the company right. that's implanting chips in the brain. So if you're wondering, is he going to bring all these things together? My guess is, my guess, my answer a question is yes. about just the, the ability for him to advance as quickly as he has. I mean, literally, there was no yeah. uh, true AI effort in terms of inside XAI uh, that didn't exist right. a year ago. I right? remember he, I mean, called me to, you know, Austin, Texas, and sitting in the back of, uh, by a swimming pool in a house somebody had rented, he's telling me, I'm going to start from scratch an AI right. company because I don't trust so, Sam Altman. So how much, though, does, is this a business that is just a function of processing power? If you have enough money mm -hmm. to buy enough chips and you can get NVIDIA to give them to you or to sell them to you, that you can be not just a player in this game, but be one of the top tier players. How much is it that versus the alchemy, the sort of software talent, the engineering talent to be able to write algorithms? And how is it possible that in a year or less, this group has managed to do it while Google, which was clearly at the, uh, you know, they were the vanguard of all this at the beginning. And I actually think inside Google, they have all of the, the, yeah. the same type of talents, but I don't know if they have struggled to productize it or what's happened here, but it looks very different. Yeah. And See, it looks very different, even for companies like Google, guys. Like, this is the information you guys need to know in looking into Tesla, looking into Elon. Not fan base, not following him because he's just Elon, but because of his performance. Because when you start marketing it up and saying, wow, Google was supposed to be leading this. This is Google. They have access to data, which is kind of interesting because now that we favor Tesla and Elon, or an individual will utilize that as an argument saying we have data, meaning there are, you know, data on miles driven. But Google had Google had the data, but still that didn't change. So it doesn't mean competition can't come because we have data. Competition in open AI came and decided to beat Google, even though Google had the data. So it's really about the people, engineers. But it's very interesting. And also Elon has a tendency to have those engineers and great teams so he does have it also but i'm just saying that that's kind of funny because we're like we got the data so nobody can catch up google had the data and we caught up not only x open x ai or excuse me open ai but also x ai so good questions here from andrew although he's missed a critically important piece of the puzzle which is the data certainly the capital eg for the hardware for training you know you must have that it's necessary and talent as well also important although Great leadership is critically important as well. We'll group those together. But then there's the data. If you don't have access to fuckloads of high quality data, you do not stand a chance. I suspect Walter is going to mention this. He's a pretty smart guy and pretty well across this stuff. But it is again important to underscore. Tesla's the only company that has real world data at scale. And I really do struggle to understand how any company is going to have a hope in hell of catching Tesla in terms of autonomy and its capabilities or with a useful humanoid robot. Google, you have Google DeepMind. Uh, they do Gemini. And it's Demis Hassabes, who is in my opinion, the greatest mind at the moment looking at AI. Mm -hmm. But you're right. At the moment, Gemini is not uh, racing ahead of Anthropic or XAI or OpenAI. I think that part of it is Musk was very smart and good at getting NVIDIA chips, getting CPUs. That's one of the gating factors. He's creating his own chip, which is taking a longer time, a Dodo chip, which right. can do visual data. So I th And once again, you saw that blurring of the lines. He was getting some right. of the NVIDIA chips for, I think, Tesla, and then he was moving it to XAI. But his plan is not to be open either, by the way. No, no. Right? Uh, so no. this whole idea of, you know, he can be frustrated or upset that he thinks that open AI is not open, Nobody but he's ever building his own closed system too. of total consistency. <laughs> well. is, it, is it about who controls it? And do you have more faith in you know, Musk look, controlling it? You know, look, I mean, from a very elevated perspective, having watched Musk very up close for a couple of years, I'm going to say something that you might think is naive, but I really believe it, which is he has certain missions he's had his whole life. He that. read Isaac Asimov. Yeah, he read that. the robot series. He thought the robots might turn on us. I have to come in and save us from hostile AI. I have to make us multi-planetary. Do you think he will? I, I believe you 100% on his idea of a mission. I, I think that's who he I is. always think after, you know, at the very beginning, I think, man, this is definitely starting an AI company, mm -hmm. buying Twitter. No, I just mean, do you believe him? Do you think AI is safer in his hands than in Sam Altman's hands? Uh, I don't, uh, no, I don't know. I wouldn't make that judgment. I'm sorry not to give you a snap answer here but that's a yeah it's, it's a compl I, complex question here's a real question of what he believes <laughs>
answer from Walter there. Extremely weak. And I think he knows the answer, he just doesn't want to say it. Isaacson has just finished explaining that Musk is very mission-driven, coming from a good place, e.g. save humanity, has a history of being in line with that mission, a long track record. He spent two years shadowing the guy, you know, right? Meanwhile, Sam Altman with a history of saying one thing and then doing another. If you had to take a... Now, I kind of move across that because I don't care about going back and forth and who's a better human. Leave us without the, is that the more AIs you have, does that make it safer? If there's 12 companies, 20 companies doing competing AIs, does that make it safer? Or is it better to be concentrated in the hands of a few, like so Google like or an AI? <laughs> How and Musk you... believes the more is the merrier because they'll check How each many other. That's, ultimately actually a, that's a very important point. That's a very point, important point. Yeah. Now, obviously, that is an important point. The more, the better. And we can look to some recent examples of this. Most people watching will be aware of the Twitter files, which exposed collusion between the United States government, three-letter agencies, and social media companies to censor. Don't really care about all that freedom of speech stuff, but let's continue to move forward. I do care about freedom of speech, but I care not to have a conversation about it all the time. Let's go. Mm -hmm. But these, these sort of front, what they call frontier models, these, yeah. these sort of large they language run. models that cost a fortune to run. Yeah. At some point, don't you think that they will either get merged or people say, look, we'll take all that processing power and yeah. put it towards this or, or what? If so we'll be down to two or three in the end, or do you think this is a five or six or seven player race? Because I think it's three or four, and I think you're right. There's certain natural factors that mean you need enormous amounts of electricity. Microsoft right. trying to open Three Mile Island, nuclear plant again. You need enormous amounts of CPUs, things like that. So, you know, my brother in New Orleans who wants to start a little, he's never going to be able to do that. So there's a natural concentration. That's most certainly true. You need extremely deep pockets. And we're talking about tens of billions of dollars. So there's a pretty high bar of entry. I wanted to make a final observation. During this segment, we noted that Walter Isaacson said that Tesla is going to, quote, flip the script on the 1010 event, right? And it's true. But this discussion mostly revolved around language models. CNBS really wanting to ask about XAI versus OpenAI's language models. And don't get me wrong, LLMs are useful and interesting. And a couple of years ago, revolutionary. But the real world utility of safe autonomous vehicles, the level of disruption, the overnight value when enabled with the software update. This is an astronomical opportunity right around the corner that everyone seems intent on completely ignoring. Consider this. Think about all the time you currently spend driving a vehicle today. For those who do, imagine what you could do with that time if the vehicle could drive you safely. We are... We are right back, alive. Let's get it. Let's take it a step further. What about your vehicle, which spends 95% of its time parked, either at work or in your garage at home? Could head out autonomously and print you money. And now, see, that's a nice dream that we have about it, but I'm not quite too sure if that's going to pan out. Yo, one of the most important things is even if Tesla sucks at their artificial intelligence, full self-driving, we robot doesn't pan out or the cars don't even pan out. One thing that will pan out, guys, and what I'm betting on, which is not on the financial spreadsheet and what people are not considering when they think about Tesla is energy, baby, the demand for energy. So if we're pumping out energy for NVIDIA, if we're pumping out energy for for Google, if we're pumping out energy for all the data centers and all the artificial intelligence that will take over because everyone hates Tesla, then guess what? We're still going to be able to make money with places like the mega factory. Yeah. Right here, mega factories, printing money, baby. Margins are extremely high. This is what people love right here. And the energy will be at its highest demand ever. So we will provide the product. We will be the NVIDIA of the future of energy security. Come on, talk to us, man. Tesla all day. Everyone hates Tesla. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get this hot ether. Let's watch this outro, baby. Let's get it. It's electric.